So uh, thank you, Hatton. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, thank you very much for participating again in, in these meetings. These are important for us as we set the path for the next uh, direction for our district. Uh, appreciate the time and commitment that folks have already given. Uh, I just want to um, just recap a little bit for you all. We started uh, this process um, pre-COVID and had a couple of community meetings that were well attended and then um, took some time, uh, took a break during um, COVID and recently have restarted. Uh, one of the big tasks that we've worked on for the last couple of weeks um, and months, in fact, is the core ideology for the district, which is the um, is, is the core purpose and the core values. Um, we, we got your feedback, we got feedback from the Board of Trustees, as well as um, from um, several other people on our staff and uh, really excited to announce, you know, we, we feel like we're in a good place with those. I know Deb will talk about um, the process that she used to get some more feedback with a survey, but I felt like the core purpose and the core values was it's really important for us to nail that. Um, those are things that stick around for quite a while. Um, so strategies and goals kind of come and go, but those core, that core purpose really sticks around for a long time. And um, so I hope that uh, we get a chance to talk about that this evening. In addition, um, really, you know, as we start getting closer to wrapping this up, um, it, it will go back to the school board again for public comment. Um, and probably take a couple of meetings with the school board before it's finalized um, and approved by the board. So all that um, hopefully will happen, um, you know, by mid-June at the latest, which will give us time to start talking about um, uh, strategies and goals for, for the coming school year. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Deborah Silk. Uh, Deborah, if you don't know her, is a, um, part of Montana School Boards Association. It's really um, important for our school board to engage um, in this process and, and lead this process. And with Deborah's help um, with the Montana School Boards Association, they've they've been able to lead this strategic strategic planning process. So, Deborah, thanks, Rob. And uh, I have to give a thank you to Hatton. She just did a marvelous job with keeping us on track last time and getting us into our rooms. And I'm sure she'll do the same tonight. I feel like um, in looking at the the names and the, the photos that I know, uh, of course I do know most of you, but um, it's nice to see familiar faces. Uh, and I would just reiterate Robin Hanton's comments. We most certainly appreciate your time tonight um, as we have in our prior sessions. This is really important work. When you're looking at all of the things that happen in our public schools, and I just have to tell you that I think the legislature is going to adjourn next week. And so I'm gleaming with joy that perhaps my life is going to change a little bit starting next week. Um, but at any rate, I think when you're talking about public schools and all of you on this call know this, um, it has such an impact on our youth. So if any of you are thinking, gee, you know, another two hours in this meeting, you really have to be thinking about the impact of not only this process, because there's value in this, in and of this process itself. It always works best if we were in person, and I'm hoping that we can get there soon. Um, but I think it's, even if you can't, just the the dialogue that you've had in your small groups, gaining perspective from people that you typically wouldn't talk to is valuable in and of itself. The outcomes, of course, from your conversations are equally important, but I think part of this process is really gaining perspectives and understanding about where people are coming from. Because let's face it, the, the trustees that sit on your board they come from all different walks of life. Um, the staff on this call, you guys are professional educators. And I think it's really important to give the trustees and the staff an opportunity to learn from one another. The trustees, in essence, represent the community that they serve, right, as publicly elected officials. And of course, professional educators 
um, and the rest of the staff on this call, it's really important, I think, for people to gain perspective. So remember what I've said from the onset, there are no right or wrong answers as we're going through this process. You know, some people might think that, gee, that's a really crazy idea. I don't want to throw it out there. People are going to think I'm off my rocker. I would encourage you to throw those ideas out there. Um, because I think what really stimulates change are ideas like that. And let's face it, if we all thought the same way, um, we would be stuck in the status quo. So be thinking about that even when you're in your small groups tonight. So I want to do a couple of things before we break out. And Hatton, um, since you're in charge, do you want to put up the um, PowerPoint that we've been using throughout the process? Just as a okay. real quick reminder. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because I know that most of you have seen it before. And remember too, Hatton, if you and that's the slide that I wanted you to go to. Remember that when you're talking about what the purpose of strategic planning is, it's not to change everything that the district is doing, but fun the fundamental distinguishing dynamic, and you guys know from working with me now for over a year, we use Jim Collins's work, the author of Good to Great and Built to Last, a lot of work uh, from Glenn Tecker with Tecker International who's a renowned strategic planner worldwide. But the distinguishing dynamic of um, organizations that are successful is they have some type of a process that they go through where they're continually looking at what's going on around them, but they only do so after articulating and preserving a cherished core ideology. And Rob mentioned a few minutes ago, and you guys probably realize this, we, you have spent a lot of time looking at the core purpose and the core values of the district. And Rob is correct. You have to get that right because everything that we do as part of this process changes except for your core ideology. Your core ideology doesn't change over time. You might you know, tweak a word <clears throat> here and there, but typically it doesn't change in terms of who you are and what you you value. So Hatton, if you go to the next slide, remember too that this process is necessary and part of the reason that we wanted these larger groups to participate is to make sure that number one, Everybody has a say so. And when we say that, it doesn't mean that everybody's ideas are ultimately going to end up in the plan. But remember, um, and we talked about this at the end of our last session on the 31st, this plan is intended to be adaptable. So even for those of you that might be thinking, yeah, I don't necessarily like the way that that part is stated, but I'll live with it for now. Remember that this is intended to be an ever evolving structure. It's intended to move. It's intend, intended to be adaptable. And what happens is if you can get a structure in place, and I tell this to many public schools that I facilitate this planning process for, if you have a structure in place and a roadmap to what you describe as success, then when the parties at the table change, when you have changes in administration or changes in the board of trustees, that roadmap remains intact. And that's not to say that you're stuck in the status quo. What it means is that you have a vision for Missoula County Public Schools. That vision is going to change over time. One of the things that I always say, and people might disagree with me, but when you're in public education, our work is never done. And I say that because in five years, the finish line that we might um, articulate today is going to be a moving target because our dynamics change, the expectations of parents change, the expectations and needs of students change over time. So we're never going to quote unquote, meet that finish line where we can say our work is done. Our work is never going to be done. 
So when you're looking at strategic planning, it really does take a collaborative visionary approach. And remember, as we're going through these sessions, we're not engaging in, and I'll remind you of this uh, as we go through tonight, but we're not engaging in action planning. Um, and I said this last time on the 31st, think about this, everything that we do tonight at the 30,000 foot level, visionary, strategic, collaborative, in terms of what we need to do together to make sure that your district is successful, which ultimately means that each and every student that attends Missoula County Public Schools is in fact successful and they are getting what they need. Um, the other thing about strategic planning, it requires a commitment to follow through um, and it requires a commitment to regularly revise and refine strategy. And I said this a minute ago and I would say it to anybody, even in our own lives, you have to think about, let's say that, you know, I'll talk about myself, for example, I've been a, a career attorney my entire life representing the interests of public schools but I have changed and evolved in my position um, so that number one, I'm adapting to the wants, needs and preferences of the members that we serve. Public schools need to do the same thing. Every successful organization needs to adapt and look forward in the words of Glenn Tecker, you always have to be looking up and out. So Hatton, do you wanna maybe, I don't wanna go through all of these cause I know you've heard it before, Go down to the, that's fine. Um, can you back up just one slide? So when you're looking at where um, we've come from, we've actually made a lot of progress. That circle over there is the very important core ideology, core purpose and core values. We've talked about that second segment. And remember, I told you to ignore that continuum at the top of this document, and I would continue to do so. We've had a lot of discussion, and I think we still need more um, in terms of the envisioned future and what that looks like. We've had discussions about the megatrends analysis, and really we're at the stage and at that segment of strategic planning where tonight we're going to look at three to five year broad-based goal areas and one to two year strategies. So you can see what's happening here that we started out timeless over on the left-hand side of this slide and we're now moving down to present time, okay? Rather than doing the opposite, because if you do the opposite, all you do is react to what you know now rather than envisioning where you wanna be and figuring out how to get there. So Hatton, if you flip to the next slide, this is just a simplified, um, more simplified diagram in terms of the order of strategic planning. We're gonna just talk about core purpose and core values um, very briefly. Last time we talked about the big audacious goal, um, you saw that survey that we sent out about the mega trends analysis. And then tonight we're gonna be focusing on really um, the three to five year plan, the goals and strategies. So that's what's going to happen tonight. So you can see where we start out by identifying who you are, where you're going, and quite frankly, how you're going to get there, okay? So moving on to the next slide, you've already seen these slides in terms of discovering the core ideology, what the core purpose means, and I'm, I'm going through these pretty quickly, what the core values are in terms of the really articulation of how you conduct yourselves and your expectations of not only yourself, but others. You'll see that on the envisioned future, and again, I think we need, we meaning probably me more than anybody, I need to take a little more time and look at the envisioned future and make sure we have it right. We also have looked at the megatrends analysis. That's the scanning the horizon and looking at what's going on around you so that you can prepare for issues that you know are going to impact whether you're going to be successful in the future. 
And then of course, the last slide um, in this PowerPoint is really the work that we're going to be doing tonight. We're gonna to be identifying three to five year broad-based goal areas is gonna be the first exercise. And then you're gonna be looking at and identifying and talking about one to two year strategies, okay? So with that, um, again, quick overview. Hatton, can you maybe put up next the executive summary of the survey that we just closed out yesterday? Sure thing. It'll just take a second to get over to that document. There we go. So what you're seeing in front of you, um, and I have to tell you in the short time span that we had that survey out, 355 responses is pretty phenomenal. If you look at the demographic in terms of those that responded, we had a huge participation from parents, which I think is a good thing, right? In terms of them participating and expressing to the district what they expect for their own children, you can see there that about uh, almost 5% from the certified staff, lower percent from classified staff, um, a few responses from community members that don't have children in the district. And then of course, one lonely student that participated in this survey, which is better than none, right? So it, I think that this survey, um, as Rob was saying earlier, is a great validation of the work that all of you have done today. If you look at the core purpose and what we asked people was, does this statement represent the core purpose of Missoula County Public Schools? And if you sort of put a divider in on Likert scales, I always uh, like, or, or I should say dislike giving people an out where they can either go right down the middle or say that they don't know. I think it's best to force people one way or the other. So if you're looking at the draft core purpose and remember everything is draft at this point in time, it's a pretty good validation that you got 89% of those that responded to this survey said they either strongly agree or they agree with that statement as it is. That's I think pretty phenomenal. Same thing on the core values. We asked for people's input on each of these core value statements. We asked for their input on the student-centered statement, the equity statement, the innovation statement, the safety statement, the inclusion statement, and the relationship statement. And if you look at the percentages again on that, pretty high validation in terms of people that strongly agree or agree that those concepts and again, some of you might say, well, the wording is not right here. Um, but remember, we're not wordsmithing, right? Tonight, we're talking about concepts. Pretty good validation when you're looking at 85% um, is the lowest percentage in terms of how people felt about those statements. That tells me that people that care about what you're doing and care enough to respond to this survey um, think that you're going in the right direction, okay? So the other um, piece to this that isn't included here, and it's the reason why I said that I probably need to do more um, work on the long-term envisioned future is because on that survey, we asked for, and I did this um, because there were comments at the end of our session last time about not enough time to really talk about it. So what we did is we asked people to, if you had just one important item that you would want to see in terms of the long-term envisioned future of Missoula County Public Schools, what would it be? We had 271 responses. And what I need to do, and I didn't have time to fully go through it. I, of course, read through all of them, but didn't have time to synthesize it. We need to look at those 271 responses and also look at the work that's been done to date and make sure that we've captured the right things, okay? So a little more work on that. The other thing um, that I was surprised by is when you're looking at the mega trends analysis, 
again, in the area of demographics, and remember, we pre-populated a lot of th these things. And the reason that we pre-populated them is that they were identified pre-COVID. <clears throat> but I think in looking at the responses on this, uh, there's pretty good validation that those issues in terms of demographics and business and economic climate and legislation and regulation and politics and social values, um, that those things and technology and science, that those things that the group identified even last um, February, February of 2020 was the last time that we met in person, that those things um, still exist today. And one of the things about this strategic planning process, you'll remember <clears throat> the slide that said that you have to have a commitment to review and refine. These things will change typically every year or every couple of years because your dynamics will change, okay? So I thought we got great feedback on this survey in terms of the draft components <clears throat> as they exist right now, okay? So Hatton, um, one more document, <clears throat> excuse me. If you'll put up the last document. So what Hatton has up on the screen <clears throat> are the draft components. So you'll see their draft core purpose you saw this document last time we met, draft core values. If you go down there uh, and Hatton, keep scrolling down for me if you would. You'll see the draft long-term envisioned future. And I want to be um, completely transparent on this because all of you reviewed this last time. And I included some of your comments they're not all included in here. And that's why this says draft, okay? Because I do think, um, as Rob noted, that the board needs to, and my intent is to take this and actually do a red line strikeout so, so that the board can look at the comments from last time and decide what they want to incorporate. So this looks an awful lot like, although there's so, there are some changes in it, it looks an awful lot like what you guys were looking at last time. But I wanted you to have the benefit of having this document and looking at these components when you go into your small groups. Because remember, um, everything is supposed to flow up and everything is supposed to align down on a strategic plan, okay? And you want to refer to this when you're talking about three to five year priorities tonight. So with that, um, I'm going to have Hatton break us out into small groups, but I want to explain your um, work for tonight. In your small groups, I want you to look at that document that has all of the drafts. And I want you to be thinking about, again, you have to think about this in terms of time spans. Last time we were talking about a 10 to 15 year time span. Tonight we're talking about a three to five year time span, okay? So maybe look at 2025 as a, as a pretty good target. So between now and 2025, if you had to articulate and identify no more than five and preferably three, okay, priorities of the district. And again, don't want you getting down into the weeds. What I want you to think about is at the 30,000 foot level. If we could only focus on three to five things in the next five years, so that we could make progress in terms of where we want to go, what would those areas be? Okay, that's going to be our first discussion. So we're going to break out 
We're going to do the same thing that we did last time. You're going to engage in discussions. I'm actually not going to join your groups because I think that all I do is interfere and make people uncomfortable. So I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to let you have really organic conversations without me interfering. And then when we come back together, you're going to assign somebody or someone's going to volunteer to report out. And we're going to see where we are in terms of those three to five year priorities. And hopefully, I'm sure there's going to be similarities. Hopefully, once we get to that point in time, then we're going to break out again. And we're going to talk about, you're going to talk about one to two year strategies under each of those priority areas, okay? So that's really what we're trying to accomplish tonight. So with that, um, Hatton, does any, first of all, does anyone have any questions before Hatton assigns you to your small groups? If you forget your assignment, I put it into the chat so you can refer to the chat. And then the document on the refined core purpose is in the chat. So everyone can click on that document and open it from the chat. If anyone has trouble with that, you can feel free to send me your email address in the chat and I can email you the document directly as well. Okay, and Deborah, we're gonna send them to breakout rooms and how much time for this first section? Um, let's see, we're scheduled to go until eight and we actually might finish a little bit early depending upon how it goes. I would say, um, let's check back in with everybody um, in 15 minutes, Hatton, and see where people are. I don't wanna go really any longer than 20 minutes because I want time for people to report out and then we're gonna to have to come to consensus on what we're looking at and depending upon the reporting out. And then I want time for people to go back into their groups and discuss one to two year strategies and report out as well. So I would say 15 to 20 minutes at most. Sounds great. And you'll get a one minute warning when it's time to come back. And there's a member of cabinet in each room. So if somebody else doesn't want to volunteer, then there's somebody that's already designated that can report out for you. Okay, I'm sending you out now. I'm hoping that all of you had enough time to at least discuss preliminarily priorities. Is that safe to say? Okay. Um, let's see, Hatton, we had four groups, correct? Yeah. Um, who was the spokesman or is the spokesperson for group one? That would be the group that had Chair Holland and Dr. Elise Guest and Amy Shattuck in that room. It's Kevin okay. Ripland. And here I am. <laughs> So Deborah, would you just like me to go through the sort of talking points that we discussed in our group? Yeah, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, so one of the big parts for us that came up at least first in our conversation was the importance of equity. Um, and throughout the district, that came up a couple of times in our conversations that uh, not that it has to be the same for everyone, but that we have to have everyone able to access programs across the district. Um, and so that was really important for many members of the people in our group. Um, also this notion of inclusive and restorative social justice practices throughout the district. I know that's something we've been talking about recently, but in that three to five year component, it's gonna be, I think an important part for, for our district to explore and consider. Um, a third uh, thought that came through in our group was community engagement and engaging with the community in a proactive way and, and, and using the community in important ways with the district. Um, and then, enhanced learning opportunities. So again, that idea of equitable opportunities, um, guaranteed and viable curriculum for every student across the district is a very important component for the group, for our group that we were in. And also the online learning opportunities are coming out of our current um, experience with COVID and, and how we can maximize online learning opportunities for our students, I think is gonna be an important part, or we think is gonna be an important part in this three to five year window and how we utilize that effectively. So those are kind of the main talking points. Did I miss anything? 
Sounds good. N not from my perspective. <laughs> All right, what did, uh, let's see, who's the reporter for group two? Uh, this is Pat, and uh, we Hi, had Pat. a good conversation, um, our group did, and I wouldn't say that these were voted on uh, item by item um, numbers, no priority, and, and just uh, several of the items that were, were Put out there there was some pushback but a uh, good conversation so one item identified was individualized individual learning plans for each student and student ownership of their learning plan and clear outcomes for success um, some of the pushback was was the challenge and and um, it being a good idea but but uh, but but difficult um, kind of looking at it from an IEP standpoint we also talked about underneath that conversation, um, the importance of students being empowered to know their, their options and to have a plan. And, um, and we talked about incorporating goals rather than maybe um, how it's phrased right now. Um, the uh, other item that was, was identified was um, art and music opportunities. And uh, the importance of enhanced, enhanced, uh, or the significance of enhanced education, um, the all-encompassing and and um, nature of art and music education. Uh, we mentioned after-school and summer programs, and then had a, a discussion about equity across the district and. Um, and I don't think there is necessarily uh, pushback, but but the question of about um, um, does it mean um, equal opportunity um, or the same? And um, do you have to replicate each program at, at each school, or do you provide opportunities at each school? And um, that's kind of where we left it. I'm. Happy to open it up for the rest of the team if they want to add anything. And I know we have had some discussions about the the individualized uh, learning plans. I think it was even referenced. I remember reading it in my notes from last session about whether or not that is, you know, realistically and doable. So that's, I'm not surprised that that has come up again, but. Good. What about group three? Who's the reporter for group three? That's me. Um, we really stayed at the 30,000 foot level in our group. And um, we chose four priorities uh, to focus on. One being ensuring that students are college, career, and or life ready by the time they leave school. Um, providing equitable opportunities and programming across the district. Uh, the one that got the most, this had the most discussion was to uh, ensure that staff are trusted and valued. We feel like the word trust needs to be in there and have the resources, supports and trainings that they need to be highly effective. There was also some discussion about ensuring that that includes um, um, a mentoring program and as an outsider to all this, I'm not sure what all this is, except Casey's nodding, so I think I'm saying it right. Uh, <laughs> and then the fourth um, priority was uh, to um, provide a safe and inclusive school environment so that students, families, staff, visitors all have a sense of belonging. And um, also be sure that this includes references as it does right now to physical, mental, social, emotional, and behavioral health that I think that was an add-on since our, our last session that referenced to health issues. So that was it, unless anybody has anything I missed or wants to elaborate. And it looks like they don't. 
they're a trusting group. Good. I don't know why it says that my internet is unstable. I haven't moved from this chair all day and it's been working fine. So, <laughs> okay. What about group four? Who's the spokesperson? I am the lucky spokesperson for group four. So, awesome. you know, our comments are pretty similar to the other groups. Uh, the equitable opportunities across all our programming. Um, was discussed a little bit, the connection to the community and the value that uh, that's a two way street um, from the community to the school and the school back to the community. Um, equity, we discussed that in particular about um, not necessarily meaning equal, but um, shouldn't not would probably not look the same. But the idea of uh, opportunities again came up quite a bit with us. We talked some about restorative and social justice. Uh, the word trauma and practices that we need to take a look at, especially coming out of this pandemic. And so um, then the word opportunities was discussed a lot with us as well. And that was across a broad spectrum, not just one particular area, but so I think we had very similar themes to everybody else. And mm -hmm. if I left anything out group, let me know. And Russ, just for clarification, when you guys talked about opportunities, did you talk about it um, district wide? Was it in relation to students, staff? Um, what was the context of that? It was more programming and opportunities. And again, back with that equitable piece of kids okay. uh, being able to have kind of multiple pathways. Okay. So what I want to do now is, um, and listen, there's a lot of overlap, which I expected, right? But after listening to the groups um, and what they talked about, it looks to me like, um, and I want your input on this um, before we break out into our smaller groups. It looks to me like all of the groups had and again, I don't want to get into wordsmithing. Let's just think about it in terms of concepts, okay? It looks like everybody had equitable opportunities as a priority for the district for the next three to five years. Is that fair to say? So I'm going to mark that preliminarily. And these aren't going to be in any order of priority. I'm just trying to identify them. So I'm going to put a star by that and mark that as one priority. Um, it looks like maybe three groups hit on the inclusion, restorative, social justice piece. Um, and I think group three talked about it more in terms of safe and inclusive school environment, looking at safety, um, physical, me mental, social, and emotional, correct? So those may be two separate things. Um, how many of you think after listening to the reporting out that the inclusion and restorative social justice, again, if you're looking at a headliner, that that is a priority for your district for the next three to five years? Anybody disagree? If you disagree, speak up. And remember, it's okay to disagree. No, okay, it sounds like, and again, these are preliminary at this point in time. So I'm gonna put a star on that by mine. Um, two of you had 
the community engagement or community connection piece. And again, if you're looking at priorities, where your focus needs to be in the next three to five years, how many of you think that that makes the top three? Anybody disagree that your priorities need to be elsewhere other than on the relationship with and between the school and your community? Uh, this is Jessica. I, it was not my sense as I was hearing the breakout groups that this one was a top three, but I might just be wrong. Okay. Two others. Yeah, I felt I I agree with Jessica. I think we had a lot of talk about um, like the value. Well, I guess I mean if we're gonna put it all together, I think it depends how we break apart the staff feeling valued and whether we're gonna put all of like the trauma and the social justice and everything all under one, or if we break it out into more than one. Okay, so I'm gonna put a question mark by the community engagement um, piece just for now. I think that all of you in, in different um, ways, aside from the equitable opportunities piece touched on the enhanced learning opportunities piece. Is that fair to say? Yes. From anybody dis anybody disagree? Can you elaborate on that a little bit? I'm not sure we really talked about that in group three. Um, and, and maybe groups one, two, or four can step in, but it sounds to me like group one had enhanced learning opportunities for students, um, and maybe it fits in with the equitable uh, opportunities, but for now I'm keeping those separated, yeah. um, but one might be a subset of the other. Yeah, and I think overall we talked about ensuring their um, college career or life ready so that would uh -huh. help to achieve that. Correct. Okay. And this is Marsha. I would agree to keep them separate for right now. I think they're different but equal things that we should think about. Okay. And then the, the one piece that group three brought up was a separate priority for the staff um, being trusted and valued. How many yeah. of you, yep. Oh. Um, just wanted to take the temperature again here. Um, how many of you think that that, if you're looking at again, headliner, okay, uh, of your staff, and I'm gonna just use that as a headliner. How many of you think that that needs to be a priority over the next three to five years? Anybody disagree? Deborah, you'll notice there's a verb missing in there anyway, or an adjective, I guess. What it actually says is MCPS staff RMs feel valued. So we is think that is that in the is that in my draft? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so okay. we think the missing word is trusted. Okay. There's one thing. There's one thing that you should know about me. I cannot proofread my own work. <laughs> I can well, I mean, proofread anyone else's, but. Talk to Carla Smirker. I will hand her something. I would say I would tell her, Carla, this is perfect. I've read through it ten times. There's nothing missing. And then, of course, she says, "Yeah, right." <laughs> the the one thing in in our group that was needed 
that was important to be a part of that isn't just being trusted and valued, but also that in that they have the resources and supports and trainings they need to do their jobs well. So you guys, if, if the group decides that that is a priority, you guys in, in our next exercise, you'll have an opportunity to explore those strategies further, okay? Okay. Thank so you. the way that I view this, and again, I want you to speak up if you have other thoughts. Um, I see, again, equitable opportunities as one broad-based priority. I see the inclusion, restorative social justice piece as a priority for the district, enhanced learning opportunities as a priority for the district, and then the staff component as a priority for the district with a question mark on the community engagement piece, okay? Anybody have different thoughts on what you heard from your colleagues? Um, this is Marsha. I have one thing, which I don't know how to characterize it, but what we've learned from COVID in terms of using remote learning and different opportunities. And as Sharon Sturbus mentioned, you know, if, if something else happens, and we need to go back to remote learning. I would like to have a topic on what we've learned about the delivery of education um, when you can't be in a building. And I don't see that in the list. And Marcia, from my perspective, and again, I could be wrong, I usually am. I would see that under your enhanced learning opportunities. Okay. Where, you would, where you would have that potential um, remote learning piece. If that fits there, then that sounds great. Okay. Any other questions or comments about those four draft identified priorities? Repeat those Deborah, one more time, this round down. Yep, I have uh, equitable opportunities. I have the inclusion slash restorative social justice piece. We have the enhanced learning opportunity piece slash headliner. And then we have the staff as again, and we'll articulate what that means. Uh, depending upon which group gets it, but staff as a high priority. Can I ask a, an outsider ignorant question? Um, in the context of the school district, then can you, can someone explain a real uh, simple difference between equitable opportunities and enhanced learning opportunities so that I can just be clear in thinking of those things in the right ways. I, I don't think that that's a stupid question at all. Um, it, it's the reason that I asked the question about whether or not it was a standalone or if one was a subset. And I think here's what I think that we should do just to flesh this out further. Um, what I would like to do, just in the interest of time tonight, is, and I'm not taking it off the table, but I think we should put the community engagement piece aside for now, okay? And that doesn't mean it's going away. Um, what I would suggest that we do is take the four pieces that we've identified as priorities and have the smaller groups meet and talk about potential strategies under each of those areas. And then I think we can better figure out whether or not the equitable opportunities piece and the enhanced learning piece actually belong in the same priority or whether they truly are two separate priorities. Does that sound like a game plan? And Deborah, I, I just wanted to, um, I, I agree with that plan going forward. I, I do believe that 
community engagement and community connections came out in two of the groups. And I also, I, I wasn't part of group two, but the, the, from my list of what they reported out after school and summer programs, uh -huh. um, arts and music opportunities, which um, perhaps could loosely be tied to community engagement. So I, I just, I don't wanna lose that one because it, it appears to me like it was a topic of at least possibly three out of four groups. Okay, and I'm okay with that. I was just trying to be fancy. I figured since we had four groups and we had <laughs> four identified, I'm okay with that. We could put community engagement in there. Or you could um, just and combine then, enhanced and equitable learning opportunities across the district. Um, perhaps, but why don't why don't we do this? Um, because I want to see if if people are thinking about them in two different ways. I think that maybe we have a difference of opinions on that. So here's what we're going to do. Um, the next exercise, remember, we're getting this down to present day, okay? So now that we've preliminarily identified, I'll say five high priorities, I want you to now think about this really in present day time, because we're talking about one to two year strategies. In fact, you might even think about this. Um, if the board adopts this initial strategic plan, let's say in June, um you'll be ready the staff will be ready to start working on this and the board with the start of the new school year right so if you're thinking about it in terms of starting to make progress during the 2021 2022 school year in the next year those are the one to two year strategies that i want you to be thinking about and remember, when you're talking about strategies, you're not talking about operation planning. This isn't deciding exactly what you're doing and who's doing it, right? Strategy, the best way to describe a strategy that I know of is a turning, think about it in terms of a turning of a dial, okay? You want to enhance, improve, increase maybe you want to start something brand new in terms of initiating maybe you want to decrease something maybe you want to completely do away with something that's not working right now so think about strategy is a moving of a dial okay and remember what i said at the beginning of this strategic planning process this is not intended to change everything that you're doing if you're doing things and they're working well, then you want to continue doing them and doing them even better than you're doing them right now. Okay. So you would want to enhance a strategy. So think about your strategies. And I taught Rob and I were discussing this while you were in your groups. It's okay if you get down into the weeds, but I want you to be thinking about this again at the 30,000 foot level. Because remember, from the board's perspective, they are at the strategic level. They're not at the day-to-day -day implementation level. That's the staff's part, okay? So, uh, and again, I can elevate your thought processes up, so don't get too hung up on whether or not it's a tactic or a strategy. I'll elevate it in the draft that I do. But I want specifically um, one group is going to take two of these priorities. And I actually want the equitable opportunities and enhanced learning opportunity to be uh, examined by two different groups to see where we land. Okay. Um, in fact, I think um, group one why don't you guys take the equitable opportunities piece? And what I want you to do is to narrow it down to no more than three high priority strategies that you think you can accomplish or make at least progress towards in the next one to two years, okay? So group one is gonna take equitable opportunities 
group two, Pat, you guys are going to take the enhanced learning opportunities. And I know that you guys discussed an awful lot of things that fall into that category already as part of your discussion. Um, group three, I want you guys to take the staff priority and further articulate what that means and what the high priority strategies would be under that component. And then let's see here, what am I missing? I think we need to, yeah, community engagement we need to assign and then the... So here's what I would say for group four. Um, group four, I want you to take the inclusion and restorative social justice piece and the community engagement piece. Does that sound like a game plan? Yep, and I'm going to drop it all into the chat so people can see it there in case you lost your way in the verbal description. So again, remember, by the time that we report out here um, in probably about 20 minutes, I want you to come to consensus in your groups about the three high priority strategies. And if you can't say to yourself, this is something that we need to focus on in the next one to two years under this area, then it should go by the wayside. Okay. Or when I get it, I'm going to mark it as a, as a medium level priority and not a high priority, but see if you can narrow it down. And remember, just talk in terms of concepts. You don't have to wordsmith this. What I want are concepts. Okay. Anybody have any questions before you go into your smaller groups? So Deborah, it's 720 now. Are you thinking 20 minutes for this? Um, let's set it at 50. Let's check in with people in 15 minutes to see where they are and see if they need maybe five ex extra minutes. Sounds Does that good. Sound like a plan. Okay, I'll send you all to your rooms now. Let me guess, you needed more time for discussion. No. I think you were optimistic when you said we'd be done early. <laughs> I probably was, but. Our group just needed more time for clarity. I think we had a lot of good ideas going out, but trying to pin down the, the jello of exactly what it was we were thinking into two or three bullet points was pretty difficult. Well, in, in that case, just throw out your ideas and then we can figure out how to prioritize them, right? And um, I apologize to group four um, for giving you two areas, but I think Hatton, after I, I got the uh, chat from you, I realized that maybe everybody should at least address the community engagement piece. So hopefully, you know, I let you off the hook. We okay. Just, we thought we were the advanced group, so we under, we were okay with that. Well, of course you were. <laughs> okay, so group one had um, the equitable opportunities um, priority. What did you come up with on that? So we had some really great discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of it, the discussion um, centered around recognizing that COVID and, and the closing downs of, of schools really shined a light on um, the inequitable um, experiences that our families and students have, have experienced. So I think one of the things that we kind of landed on <laughs> was um, committing to uh, regenerate engaging learning environments for all our students um, with differentiated and equitable opportunities. Um, we also talked a lot about using technology and what we learned from, from our online learning to provide those opportunities across the district, but also how important it is to have the resources, professional development to back that um, for students, for parents, for teachers. Um, 
I, and I think that's it. Kev, did you have anything else? Yeah, I think that was pretty much. Good. I'm just writing down as quickly as I can. Um, any comments about the equitable opportunities priority from anyone else that wasn't in the group? No? I'll make one quickly. I just wonder if the language around um, equitable um, opportunities is sort of shifting us into thinking about it in a different way than looking at the idea of examining equity across the district on a number of levels. Um, so we're not just talking about like whether or not kids can access the middle school IB program, right? We're looking at like outcomes of kids in all the different schools and looking at the data around race and looking at the data around reading levels and the intersection of race and economic background and the neighborhood that they're living in and whether or not they're at reading level by grade three and whether or not they have the same access to arts programs because their school can't match the spark fund and whether or not they have as many opportunities to go on field trips because their PTA can't as fund as much. Like I think the equity is is a bigger, equity across the district is maybe bigger than just equitable opportunities. It's like looking at our district and the ways that it's not equitable right now across a number of levels and prioritizing that as something that we see important in our community and that we want to address. Gabrielle, I think you just summarized what we spent about 10 minutes talking in our group over the two sessions very well in a minute. That really was a thrust of what we talked about summed up very well. Perfect. You can skip me then there, Deb. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You're no, that's you're just the equitable piece. The you're enhanced you're next and, on deck. Whatever. Don't try to get out of work, Pat. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna flip my camera off so I can try and read my notes. Um, we, uh, yeah. we had a very uh, rich conversation and, and I, what we started out I, I is, is really looking at a couple of bullet points that we discussed before under enhanced learning, um, the individualized learning plans, mm -hmm. holistic, multidisciplinary, multicultural integrated curriculum and, and um, our conversation really morphed into the um, uh, advanced and enhanced learning opportunities idea, and um, and really what what can the district offer to ensure opportunities for kids, um, for students, to uh, to meet their needs um, and to uh, help them reach their goals, and and not in a forcing way but in an opportunity way and, and some of what we talked about is is um, from a program standpoint is is looking at um, improving um, the uh, remote learning and and how can we make that better if that's going to um, continue which it, it might um, we talked about art um, integration and um, and we talked about IB and, and we also talked about um, what the community would see as, as not in existence now, but could be because um, it's an it's a opportunity that, that isn't on the table right now, but, but could be. And all with the goal or the objective of, of providing those enhanced opportunities. And, and we did talk in terms of of advanced, enhanced uh, excellence, and those types of those types of things, um, and so that's that's what uh, what I captured. So, uh, did I miss anything? I th I just wanted to throw in the specific connection to the equity piece in my work in advanced academics. Like we talk a lot about not just achievement gaps but excellence gaps, and how schools are doing. A reasonable job on closing achievement gaps, but 
kids that reach the highest levels, like not just proficient, but advanced or exemplary or whatever the state calls it, schools really struggle with that. And some of that comes back to not having sort of broader opportunities to where the kids could stretch. Because what happens is when the school district doesn't have them, then the only people that get it are the people who have the means SES wise outside of school. So that, you know, advanced programs in school can be a really great leveler for kids that aren't going to have opportunities to go to a museum here or to do this start program here or to do this higher level math in a lower grade or whatever um, that higher SES kids would have hiring tutors or doing whatever they do. Good. Any other comments about um, or questions about the work of group two? And it's okay to interrogate Pat. <laughs> you guys are going to let him off easy. <laughs> they don't want to hear me talk anymore, Deb. <laughs> That's not true. So group three, what did you come up with on the staff priority in terms of strategies? Um, we have three. The first one is to continue um, and find full funding for the secure and effective mentorship and onboarding program, which includes dedicated coaches. Um, and that involves not just recruiting quality educators, but retaining them as well. And I think it's funded currently through an NEA grant that's, that will run out in a year or two. Um, and so that, that's why the fully funding is mentioned there so that it can continue beyond this year. Um, another one was to offer support of existing BIPOC staff members and administrators and to continue to recruit culturally diverse and inclusive staff. Um, there was some discussion about um, historically feeling like the uh, teaching staff is sort of cookie cutter or homogenous. So allow teachers to be different from one another and um, in that context. And there was also discussion about providing opportunities within the professional learning environment for ownership. And I think I didn't quite capture that correctly, but I think there's a broader discussion around that, that if anybody wants to chime in or let it go for now. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the third strategy was to increase in the, in regard to, um, making sure that teachers have the supports and trainings and resources that they need for success, which we feel is part of this, trusting, valuing, and, and making sure they have the resources they need to be successful. So the third goal addresses that those resources in, in increasing the number of counselors, social workers, special education, and support staff. They felt that, that especially in light of this last year, that was something that um, was really invaluable and will continue to be. Good. Yeah. Any <clears throat> comments or questions? Oh, about, yeah, go ahead. One other comment, I'm sorry. There were some things on the, the broader list, the 10 to 15 year draft form that some things that already have are probably well in progress, I think, like the trauma informed work and whatnot. So that we just wanted to make that note too, as you guys are looking back over all of that. Okay, great, thank you. Any comments or questions on that group's work? No? Um, group four, who is the reporter? I'm going to report out again, Deb. Okay. So, you know, we had social justice and inclusion. Mm -hmm. And the more we thought about those, those, those are, it's, it gets kind of wide. We added in restorative practices. We talked about a social emotional learning. And suddenly it got kind of big to get your mind around it. 
maybe those might be separate categories to some degree. Um, so I just throw that out there. Yeah, I mean, maybe be. social emotional learning is the broader one that the others might fit under, but just for your consideration. The, uh, we talked about the value in the I value training that we're going through in this area and how we could capitalize on that. We talked about student leadership roles and especially at the high school level, perhaps the middle school with student clubs, you know, re probably referring back to social justice and inclusion. And then even at the elementary level, community circles, teaching kids how to communicate with each other and talk about ideas and concepts other than just reading and math. Uh, we talked about trying to include U of M students as well. So, but I, I gotta tell you the category itself kind of got big on us. Social justice, inclusion, restorative practices, social emotional learning. There's quite a bit in there. So, um, but we had a nice discussion about all of that. And then on the community side, um, one of the things that came up that I thought was good was uh, we have a lot of nonprofits that we work with in some various ways, and they don't ever get a chance to talk to each other. And how could we as a school district help the communication between our nonprofits? So that everybody kind of knew what the other was doing and how they might work best with each other, because a lot of times it's in the dark and they're not sure what other people are doing. And you know, people don't want to step on other people's areas, but if we had some way to message each other a little bit better and the district could facilitate that, that would be a good thing. Um, the Missoula Education Foundation, again, same kind of idea, getting that brand out there bigger than it is already and helping build bridges between businesses and organizations and, and then working with the district as well might be a good way to uh, enhance our community engagement. And then our traditional our traditional partners like Missoula Aging Services and Grandparents Program that we just had to cancel altogether this year and getting those kinds of things reestablished. Uh, again, getting back to that bigger community piece. So I think that was most of it, maybe some mentorships. Good. Again, on the community side and, and inside the school itself, we talked a little bit about between grade levels or middle school to elementary and high school kids working with lower grade kids as well. So that's kind of it. So you guys did get through the community piece. We did indeed. Did anyone, um, nice job by the way. And I know that that restorative justice uh, inclusion, it is broad and we're gonna have to take a look at, you know, whether or not that might be two separate priorities. Um, We'll have to see how that shakes out in the end. Um, and I appreciate you guys taking on the community piece. Did any other groups have time to look at any high priority strategies on the community engagement piece? And it's okay if you say no. What about group one? Did you guys get to the community engagement piece? No. What about group two? No, we, we, we didn't. We talked about uh, community um, involvement when we discuss uh, learning opportunities and enhancements, but that was about okay. it. Right. And it's so that like what part of that was to systematically reach out to the community and figure out what focused learning was desired by the community. So I, I, to me, that is a engagement. And I'll just add that, you know, the, the arts and music and the summer learning were really important as well. I think there's a lot of community integration there, though certainly it should be embedded in the curriculum as well. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> group three, did you have time to talk about the community engagement piece at all? I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. We didn't, no. no. Okay. And that that's okay. I know that I have you under time constraints. Um, but I appreciate all of the work um, that you have done both tonight and, and previously. Rob, do you have any comments based upon anything that you've heard tonight that concerned you or 
additional comments based upon the input and reporting no. out? No, I appreciate it. it. It's a lot to synthesize. I took quite a bit of notes, but um, I think, you know, we'll, we'll have to compare notes, Deb, and see if we've got everything lined out. I appreciate the um, narrowing down a little bit. I know that uh, that's kind of what we were looking for from the district level is having a little bit of um, marching orders, I guess, if you will, for the next few years. So I think I think we're pretty close. And yeah, I would I would agree. I can add something. Of course. I am so proud of everyone for giving the time to the strategic planning committee. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all. Thanks, Marcia. We most certainly appreciate the the trustees on the call and the staff and community members. Um, really appreciate your time. One housekeeping note, if you were the reporter, could you please, and I see one group already did it, could you please email Hatton your notes? Um, it will help Rob and I as we try and synthesize. I was writing as fast as I could as well, um, but I know I missed some things, so it would be helpful to have the notes um, from each group as we go through this. Um, any final comments? And I apologize. I said that I would uh, maybe finish early, but we're one minute over. <laughs> and I just want to thank Rob and Deborah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Glad to be part of it. So with that, um, again, make sure that Hatton gets your notes. Appreciate your time tonight and your input. I think the game plan from here on out um, is for me to visit with Rob and probably Marsha and get some type of a draft together and figure out then what the next steps are. Does that sound like a, a game plan? Totally sounds like a game plan. All right, sounds good. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you so much. Thank you all. If you're Thank curious, you. tune in Thank in you. May. Thank you, Hatton, too, for your okay. coordination. My pleasure. Have a good night, everyone.